And now for something completely different. So I think Natalie turned up finally. So where are you, Natalie? Finally, Rob, didn't finally. you uh, reschedule me three times? Come on. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about your chapter and ignore, <laughs> ignore my um, ignore my kind of incompetence for sorting out my diary. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm all right. Um, London's rubbish, but, you know, it's okay. We're, we're, we're the world right. is rubbish right now. It's okay. We'll the get world better. Is rubbish. But fingers crossed, right? So where are, where are you in the world, Natalie? I am currently in the in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, um, and it's kind of a crazy thing that I'm here because I'm clearly a New Yorker, which I cannot hide from and don't want to, that then moved to California when I met my husband, and, and then we drove together with our two infant daughters to Colorado when the pandemic hit. You were like, we're out of here. See you later. Is that Peace. What Peace, Peace out. <laughs> the, um, so you guys are mountain time. This is a new thing for me. Like I never knew we're, about mountain it, time. We're on mountain time and it's a new thing for me too. I really don't know where I am, but we're figuring it out every day, Rob. <laughs> every day. So so the, th- the main thing that um, I'm, I wanted to talk to you about is kind of, and you said it's tongue in cheek, but taking massive action, right? So can you explain what that means to you and how you kind of advise people to take that? Because if, if I, as, an, as a normal human being that I am, that kind of scares me. So how do you kind of work with that? Well, first of all, you have to stop thinking of yourself as a normal human being. Okay. I'll, I'll you have wait. to start thinking, you know, like when I talk about like, oh, the mere mortals. I mean, no, you say I can do anything. There's nothing that's going to stop me. And you reframe that to what's possible. And then everything is. And look, you know, even my story about moving to Colorado amidst a pandemic, no one is a tree. Get up and move if you don't like your life, if you want to change. But a lot of people are scared. They like their little circle of shit that they have put around them. And the fact is that until we stop being scared and until we are so sick of, and not to say that LA was bad, I mean, certainly not. But in life, when you are in a situation and there needs to be change, you are that change that needs to happen. And Rob, look, I told these 20 women on this call who have become dear friends, I'm going to make every single one of you a best-selling author. They did the work and we made it happen. But the fact is the first step is taking that step saying, Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. We're going to make it happen. Baby steps, right? You know what? Screw baby steps. You know, my kid (laughs) a month ago was not walking. Now she's running and she's a year old. And the fact is, People think it's going to be so hard. It's going to take so long. And they psych themselves out. Psych yourself in. Like, it's not that hard. And most people don't go for anything in life. So when you actually strive, you're surprised. How did I become a TV regular? How did I become a best-selling author? How am I running this huge empire? Well, because you went for it. So you come across as confident, right? Which is awesome. But um, so so did even throughout the last, the 2019, right? Did you always have this confidence or did you ever have any doubts of what you wanted to do last year? You know, Rob, everyone has doubts. You know, sure. here's the thing. At 15 years old, I was walking across the street and hit by a drag racing car. Two guys racing at 60 miles an hour. My entire left side of the body was broken. I was in a wheelchair at 15 and... You think I didn't have doubts? Why did this happen to me? Why am I still here? Like, how can I go back to school at 15 in a wheelchair? You just get over it and you realize that life is so precious. And our little box, and my children are in the background, our little box of comfort is the thing holding us back. Like, look, is it hard sometimes to rev yourself up? And before I go on a major national network to speak, like, oh God, are people going to like me? Oh my God, I'm nine months pregnant. What are they going to think about my double chin? You know what? You just get over it and you go. And, and many people hold themselves back. They're the only ones holding themselves back. So I know, I know you're busy. So as, as kind of a final note, what, what would you say to people coming into 2021? You're alive. What a, what a blessing. What a treasure. Do not let go of the one beautiful, magical opportunity you have to live. 
And with that life, you better leave a legacy of love and be living your legacy every single day. Your legacy is not what happens when you die. It's what happens when you live. Boom. There we go. Boom. Thanks, Boom. Rob, for Mic getting drop. me in. And uh, I'm going to go to the babies now. Thanks, everyone. Love to all. Best of luck. See you later. <laughs> okay i don't know how to i don't know how to kind of uh move on from that uh deb good luck it's because you're next so, so um where are you friend i'm right here how are you doing good i'm right here i'm here you're can you good hear me? i okay. can hear you can you hear me okay i, yeah, talk, I can hear you so, so talk to me right so I, um like okay all the Everybody's going to stop the giggles, or I'm going to sit here and just giggle. I don't know what's going on. Okay, we're here. We're here. Boom. So, so talk to me, right? So, we we yes. we've we spoken a couple of times. Um, last time we did a podcast, I was in a broom cupboard. Um, so this is this is, is a slight true. improvement. That was the first time we talked to you in a broom that cupboard. The, that was the first time. I do apologize. The um, so my surroundings are slightly improved, but not much. But um. So talk to me about this book, right? So how did you kind of get involved in this process? So apparently, and I don't really remember this, but according to Sherry, I was the first person to say I'm in. Um, probably because I didn't know what the heck I was getting into. So I was like, sure. Like, I, I don't really know. Um, it was one of those probably like impulsive, like the chat's going and I just jumped in. Um, yeah, sure. So yeah. you know what? Like I... I have a lot of big ideas. I think we all do. And there's a lot of ideas that are like not yet ideas and books and writing are one of those things that I'm really good at procrastinating and shoving off. So when somebody said, let's go do this, a chapter seemed like a, a doable amount for me, but I, I will confess. And I don't think I've ever confessed this to this group that I was totally one of those that procrastinated because the ideas just did not come together for me. Like it just didn't until like I wrote it in an hour when it was late and I was in trouble and I was like needing to just sit down and do it. And that is, I'm a crisis mode person. Um, Kristen and I share this in common that we jump in in crisis. So I sometimes have to create that moment for myself. I, I love your chapter, right? So um, talking about food, I love food. Um, so it, it is, is, did you talk about food because that's kind of your kind of comfort level or, and you like, um, cause you talk about in the, your chapter about having all this wonderful time with your children. Is that, is that kind of where this kind of chapter kind of started from you for you? You know, I have always been a big believer that people come together and can connect over stories and food, right? If you can put a big plate of brownies in the middle of the table, you can probably solve any problem like out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So I am, it's just my, it's my language. And I think that if we can, it's also a common, you know, we can find something about food that we like, you know, that somebody can talk about. So there's this commonality that it always builds a bridge. So even though you and I are not sharing a meal, I'm just going to say this right now that because Kansas city is playing Buffalo tomorrow, okay. it's tomorrow. I will Got be you. more than happy to ship you some real barbecue sauce as soon as it's over with. So we'll just get that out of the way, right? But you and I could talk about, I mean, I have nothing really to say about football. My husband could come in and like straighten out the world, but you and I can connect about it over the food. And I guess I could be eating wings for the rest of my life. If you guys win. So you're, you're, you're feeling, fairly, yeah. So you're feeling fairly confident you're going to win tomorrow. Is that the, is that what we're, what we're saying? I'm just going to say this, that even through covid the word i can talk to anybody in the world and this has happened to me and the word they will say to me oh my gosh you live where mahomes is they'll be like you are kansas city like they know mahomes so i've had to actually through the pandemic learn a little i mean i'm constantly texting my husband and being like please tell me i need all details about blah 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 someone's asking me right now i know nothing nice but um so the question I have for you then is like you um you're you're very much an get up and go kind of lady. Um how was the uh how was last year for you then? Was it tough? Did you did you go actually I'm going to take the bull by the horns and this is going to be an awesome year? Like what was your kind of mindset in 2020? 
Like starting the year or like March 12th? Let's go start and then how everything kind of fell apart. I threw like one year ago this weekend, I threw a, um, a retreat, a women's legal retreat, like three day away, all about taking on 2020. It was this like, let's go kind of attitude. Um, I never left that attitude. I never left Mm -hmm. that focus. Um, but actually what, you know, you get to March and everything starts shutting down. And I think that we had to regroup. We had to pivot. We had, I hate that word, by the way, but we had to, um, we had to remain flexible and open and seize the opportunity. So 2020 ended up being a, you know, it's an awful year. Like there, there's no way to describe, you know, in some ways what people have gone through and what our world has had to take on, like not anything but awful. That being said, there were also some really great silver linings in it and some opportunities to change my business, to expand my business. Um, as Trisha said, like the 10 X, um, philosophy never Mm -hmm. was more true than in 2020 for me. So you can be honest. Do you feel like you've now spent too much time with your kids? No, because now I see college on the horizon. Okay. There's an end in sight, right? So I see college and I'm like, this is going to be like sad. They're not going to really, I mean, I constantly am like, okay, are you going to text me between classes? Like, are you going to, I mean, I ask them these random questions and they think I'm weird. Um, But I do, I didn't get to be with them as much. Like when they were babies, I was working like a nanny had lunch with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wasn't there or they were in school. I mean, I was that mom who had, two-year-olds in school five days a week half days like and then somebody else you know like there was just a lot of shuffling I tried to be around as much as possible but I think I might be a better teen mom than I was a baby mom I think that's okay to say right the um but but one of the things for me is right over the last year I've seen lots of my children which the year before I didn't see any of them right so we um when Mabel was born our second like I went to Houston the next day pretty much because um well, you, you working for American companies, they're kind of just like, oh, you have to come over here right now. I was like, okay. So, you know, we've we've had the ability um, to see them all, which is great. And I think, and I'm probably sure you agree that law is a bit traditional, but I think they've had to pivot, right, over the last year and give that flexibility, do you think? Oh, for certain. I mean, I came back from my first day back from maternity leave from my son, and I was asked to get on a plane to go to London. And it actually started the shifting of my legal career, you know, right then and there. Um, That being said now, you know, everybody who is the naysayer of you can't build business unless there's a conference, you can't build, you know, you can't bring in a client unless there's a cocktail party. You can't have a client unless we're out, you know, at the golf outing, Mm -hmm. they've either been stagnant and not grown their practice and are in a whole world of hurt right this second, or they have figured out that all of us who've been trying to show them how to do it without that might have something to say and that there's other ways and you, you got to just figure it out for you. Mm-hmm. You just got to figure and it now out. Now I don't think they'll yeah. go back. Well, hopefully, right. Hopefully we'll, we'll see. Cause you know, <laughs> hu- by human nature, we love doing what we're used to. So fingers crossed, but thanks Deb. It's good to see your face. Thank you. Good to see um, you. Megan, are you in the house? I am here. Hi. How you do- Hi. I cannot see you. Is that okay? Am I not going to see you? Is that right? I'm here. I see I can myself. See you. I see you. <laughs> I see. I see. You. I'm looking at myself right now. <laughs> can you see? Can you see me? More importantly, I see you too. Yeah. There we go. So, um, so thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, like, so, so obviously, with so many of the chapters within this book, um your kind of heading kind of really resonated with me, right? Um, So by nature, like I think perhaps lawyers, salespeople or anyone in between wouldn't always admit that we are okay, right? So um, can you talk to us what that means to you about being, we are not okay? Well, it kind of goes, I had to, you know, when everything started to happen and I felt like things were like crumbling around, I had to take on that everything is fine because I had to kind of handle everything for the kids and work and just, and I felt like everyone was in a downright panic. Um, And, 
you know, after I think a few days, I was like, well, I had to admit to myself that I'm like, maybe I'm not okay. <laughs> like, and that's, yeah. that is okay. But I still had to kind of keep on that strong front. Cause what good does it really, would it do if I like kind of broke apart and during the middle of, you know, my kids being home and wondering like, why aren't we going to school anymore? Why can't I see any of my friends, you know, and I, I kind of had to put on, you know, at least a, a face of being okay, but acknowledge that mm -hmm. it, it wasn't great right at that point, but it was going to eventually turn around. We just had to get kind of through that. Yeah, no, it's tricky, yeah. right? It's really tricky when you've got kids because yes. there's like, there's mum and dad face and then there's real face, right? And so, um, and especially as when COVID hit, we all were at home all the time. Did you, was that a balance you found tricky or <laughs> how, how, how did you, how do you survive, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I yeah, yes, it was extremely tricky. And I think everyone here would agree that it was extremely tricky and it's still tricky. I mean, we're still all home. It's a little bit easier now, but at that time, and I, 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 I'm sure everyone here would agree. You're wearing like 15 hats um, at all the, at the same time. So they're all like piled up and you have to like kind of juggle everything and make it all work. Um, I, I'll be the first to admit I had very unfine moments that I, you know, would freak out at. We've all been there. <laughs> we're all at the dining room table and I have a, a pre-K and a first grader and I have my computer and not everyone's like, I was like, here's your worksheets, go do them. And it didn't all go to plan. <laughs> so there's, you know, it definitely was not great at all times, but I think by, you know, September, we had a system. <laughs> we had ish, right? So um, isn't it... Uh, out, out, I don't know the phrase, but uh, yeah, it's um, we all kind of adjust, and I think it's kind of um, the beauty of human nature, right? Is that we will adapt to kind of survive and cope, and sometimes, and I, we did it as well. Is that we you kind of underestimate your kid's ability to adapt because everyone's, everyone's so used to school, right? So it's good. Yeah, and everyone deals with you know situations different ways. I mean, my husband was buying fifty pound bags of flour because he was worried like he'd never. I was that. I was that guy as well. <laughs> I was that guy as well. Don't worry. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm annoyed that there's a fifty pound bag of flour in the middle of my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not neat. Um, so I mean, it was about a matter of like kind. I had to be the glue in the center to kind of handle everyone's you know internal stress, and even though I was very stressed myself. Mm -hmm. so so you um so you're a litigation lawyer right i am yes and and so the question i have for you is how how do you th when things get to a little bit more normality how do you think the world of litigation is going to look because I, I used to be in e-discovery so i'm always interested in this world you know and this is something i've talked a lot about with a lot of people um over the last year and i don't think it's ever going to be exactly the same in a good way I think we've, through this whole experience, we've learned how some of the very inefficient things in the, in the litigation process can become more efficient. For instance, like going, you know, to court for a giant calendar call that you're going to be in front of a judge for all of a minute, if that, mm -hmm. but you have to sit there for an hour and a half and, and travel, you know, an hour there, an hour back. I think those types of things we've now realized we can do in a much more efficient way and can be handled virtually. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, moving forward though, you know, the virtual um, civil trial is not a good thing. And I, I don't think we're gonna be seeing that, um, but I, I, we're gonna see like a combination of getting rid of those time sucks and it's gonna streamline the process. Um, so I'm grateful for that. You know, I, I, I'd much rather handle a 15, 10 minute conference from my home than traveling, you know, three hours round trip just for that. It's just a waste of clients time and money um, or waste of clients money for me to spend the time to do something I could do in a much shorter period. You also can, you as well, right? Is you can see more clients, right? So yeah, you can get a lot more accomplished <laughs> if, if half yeah. of your day isn't spent, you know, traveling to, you know, Bohunk County to talk to someone for five minutes. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pretend I know where that is. But, um, oh, yeah, I just so, made it up. So, I don't know. It's somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a made up place. <laughs> it's a made up place. I'm sure it's somewhere, right? So, um, so what, what, what did you get out of writing your chapter? What, what kind of sense of purpose did you kind of find from writing what you did in your chapter of your book? Well, it, it really helped me actually put, you know, how I was feeling 
and address it. Like, I think I just went through that whole period, not really thinking about it very much. And I was able to take a step back and be like, oh, like that was like a little intense. And I didn't really address my feelings at the time. So it made me take a few steps back and really put it on paper. Um, And, you know, but like Deb, I I was kind of the last minute I was up at like two o'clock in the morning. Like I was, you know, banging out a last minute paper because I was like, oh God, the deadline, I got to, you know, throw up on paper and then fix it. So I I was happy that Deb (laughs) admitted that she did the same thing that I did. But it was, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of like therapy for me to you know, mm-hmm. put it out there. And it was hard too. Cause I'm like, Oh, this sucks. Like who's going to want to read this, you know? Um, and then getting the positive feedback from, you know, all the self editing and all the editors in the group was, you know, it, it was nice. It was nice to hear all that. Nice. I, I, I suppose I have the same question that I asked winter for you as well is that who, who, who would you suggest read this book? It's quite a big question, but to, to read this book. Yeah. I mean, I would suggest it to any, anybody who, I think anybody can pick up this book from any career, um, any male, female kid, you know, elderly person can pick up this book because we all went through this experience, right? And everyone had their own version of this experience. And I think anyone can pick it up and read all our very individual and different experiences going through COVID and then also using it to positive to connect with people and, you know, expand um, our networks and help each other out and lift each other up. I think everyone can pick it up. I mean, I will say, and I think I talked about it in my chapter when this idea was proposed, you know, that, um, you know, a women's networking group, I was the first to be like, women often, often put each other, each other down and don't help each other. Yeah. Is this really going to work? And it, and it did. So I think anyone could pick up this book. Even I could give it to like, if a, a teenager be like, read this, because this is an example of how you, you don't bully and you help each other out. And, you know, you're, you're kind and you work for work to help other people and in the process you're helping yourself and you're helping others and you're gonna you know move forward so i think anyone can read it and get pulled something out of it i think that's so true as well right so like we've got two girls my wife's one of three girls and and you lot can be brutal to each other right Mm -hmm. so it's it's so it's nice that there there can be this um camaraderie right these kind of processes yeah and i think i mean i think for all young girls old girls adult girls, girls just need girls. to learn from yeah. <laughs> females should learn that you know we we aren't against each other we're for each other and you get more out of it if you know you you bring people up rather than put them down that doesn't do anyone any good including yourself nice but no thank you so much for your time megan really thank you it. thank you jackie are you are you here in the house i am here how are you, Good Rob? Mo- Good morning. I changed my background because uh, Talar was very kind enough to tell me that the shadows coming through the window were making me disappear. So that's right. I I need to get better at my. I need like a halo light, and so I don't have that. Either. <laughs> I don't have that either. So when I was um, oh, well, part of last year, I was actually spending it in um my sister-in-law who's 19's bedroom doing my job and she had a halo light. So I was, uh, I was leveraging that. And then she would come home and be like, Rob, what are you doing? I was like, it gives me a good complexion. It's in lights yeah. in front of you. And I heard that it's really good. So you can tell I don't work uh, from home. Uh, I'm, I'm in my living room right now. Um, so like uh, Kristan, I'm, I'm in family law and we have very urgent needs of clients in emergency situations. And so our office has been open throughout the pandemic. And that's why, you know, I don't have a lot of office appearing spaces in my home. That's all right. I, uh, hey, wherever you can, there's some internet and some electricity. I think you're good. So don't worry. The, um, so, so again, we mentioned it before when I, when I spoke um, to some of the other guys. But so what, what's LinkedIn Rockstars to you? So what I uh, connected to in this group, and I don't remember when I was invited, but it was earlier on, is I was just completely struck by the fact that we are women from all over the country, a very diverse group. I have never ever spoken to women attorneys in Kentucky and Maine and uh, you know Colorado ever before. I found it so interesting what we had in common and, and how we were different. And uh, we, had, we were going through a very uh, intense political situation. We had some different political views. 
um, I just really loved being part of that diversity. Um, and, you know, I, I come from a diverse background myself, Middle Eastern immigrant parents. Um, I just, I don't know, I just love the energy of the group uh, from the very beginning. And the fact that we all went through the pandemic together, collectively freaking out in different ways for different reasons, and then really supporting each other uh, in really, really significant ways. I just loved it. And I really love every single person in this group. I've really learned from all of you and been inspired by from all of you in many different ways. And uh, regarding the book, I had actually written a book before and I knew how hard it was and I knew mm -hmm. how daunting the idea was. And, but of course I love to write. I relate to what Claire said, I have an idea and I wanna just put it out there. And when the idea came to write a chapter right away, I was like, this is amazing. It's like almost therapeutic, let me write about it. And, uh, but we're not for the fact that there are some women in this group that are highly organized, very good at setting goals, you know, set up Google spreadsheets, set up teams to edit each other's chapters, you know, dealt with a publication agreement and tax issues and who do we donate the proceeds to because all the proceeds of the book are being donated to a very worthy charity. I mean, it was these leaders in the group and I was very much a follower in this regard that got us to the point. And the idea that we would have a bestseller on our hands, I mean, unimaginable, unfathomable. I don't think any of us really expected that, but some of the women in the group were really good at making that happen uh, by, by getting the book to the right people and, and the posts on LinkedIn at the very beginning created this buzz. Uh, the chapter that was, uh, the foreword that was donated, uh, that was dedicated to Ruth Bader Ginsburg was such an inspired decision. I yeah. think that was a decision everything just came together in the most beautiful way. And I was really a, a beneficiary of it. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you. And thank you, Rob, for inviting us today. This is really interesting. No, it's good. It's, um, it's put me on the spot. Like I, I haven't done homework for about 20 years. So this has been, um, this has been good. And I, I had to, so Deb spoke to me earlier this week and she was like, Rob, you better be prepared or you're going to get eaten alive. So I was like, Oh God. Um, so, but no, but no, I, I really appreciate um, all of those kind of statements, but so how, how did you come around the process um, for writing your chapter, Jackie? Was it just something you were like, this is what I'm going to do? Or was it like a trial well, process? Or My chapter is called Stressed But Blessed. And that's sort of the theme for my life and the theme for family law and, and anyone going through a challenge. And I immediately saw the connected the dots uh, between going through a pandemic, having all this chaos and uncertainty and having your life turned upside down and I immediately connected it to my own practice area of family law because it's like the whole world is going through a really bad time and a temporary time and it's gonna get better. And that's sort of the theme of my chapter that all of us can go through something really terrible and monumental, but still rebuild and start over. And I relate that to my own life. I mean, my husband and I are married a very long time. I have four children that are a little bit older and they all came back home and it was complete chaos here and we had plenty of fights Lots of, uh, you know, not so beautiful moments, but ultimately, you know, it's just being stressed, but very blessed and, and being grateful for the good things that you have, that we all have. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the theme of my chapter and, and what I drew inspiration from. And, and like uh, Kristan said, family law is a very, very emotional, urgent practice area. You know, the clients need you at all hours and mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a very active practice area into the future because of the mental health issues and so many things that are going on behind closed doors that are finally coming out and people are making decisions that are regarding their own families and their own future. And it's a, yeah, it's a tricky topic, right? So especially at the moment when people kind of are stuck in a, a small kind of space together for a really long period of time, you, um, you must be quite busy at the moment, I imagine. It's busy. I mean, mental health in general is going to be a very busy area. I think coaching lawyers in general, I think we're all going to be exceedingly busy because there's a lot of disruption going on. Uh, lots of things that are just being looked at in different ways. And you need lawyers to kind of put that all in order. And so I, I just think in general, uh, lawyers, coaches are going to be so busy because people really need the guidance. I think it's a good place to stop. So thanks, Jackie. I really appreciate it.